guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here and you're into 3D printing, photography and drones, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you won't miss anything. We're reviewing a printer today, we're reviewing the Longer LK4 Pro. They were so kind that Longer to send me a sample of their printer. To tell the truth, I reached out to them and they fulfilled my request, so I'm very happy about that. Let's jump into the review, let's see how the unboxing went for me and then let's get back and see some prints and I'll tell you what small upgrades I've done to the printer and my pros and cons of this printer. Before moving forward with the review, I would like to tell you about this collaboration I have ongoing with this Instagram page, it's called Italy 3D Prints. This page shares uh, worldwide 3D prints and gives you an idea on what's going on on the 3D printing world. It's a great place to find inspiration, to find some models, ideas on what to print. All the links will be in the description. Go visit this Instagram page, you will not regret it. Unboxing of this printer was was a good experience. It's packed really really well. All the corners are safe and with rubber around it. It took me around half an hour to 45 minutes to put it all together and the printer comes assembled let's say 70%. As you can see it's not that hard to put it together. It's uh, really really good if you're a beginner and really have no idea how 3D printer works. So it's pretty straightforward. First thing I've noticed is that for less than 230 euros, you have a very, very strong frame with a perfect print volume for any desktop setup. Plus, the colored touchscreen is one of the best I've seen so far. It's very unique and very user-friendly. As mentioned, print volume is 220 by 220 by 250. It has a heated bed, which is glass on one side and textures on the other one. I've um, been using the glass one, I find it easier to clean and had no issues for the print to stick to it, so I like the glass one. This printer has super silent stop motors, but a very loud fan hit me as soon as I turned the printer on for the first time. I'm sure you can upgrade and fix it with a larger fan or I haven't tried yet, but I've read that somebody fixed the issue putting a larger fan, it's like three or four euros and you can fix the issue. This printer is a 24 volts that compared to many of the other of the same category which are 12 is more reliable because it reaches temperature faster than the other and uh, you start printing faster so I like that a lot. We don't have auto bed leveling on this printer. Manual leveling is pretty straightforward and easy to do if you had another printer or if even if it's your first printer, you will find it very easy to level it. Other two features that I liked a lot is the filament runout sensor and uh, the recovery after power shut down. I live in an era where the electricity comes and goes, so a lot of times I come back and power is not there. I found this little baby here waiting for me in pause and I resumed the printer with no issues so I really like that. While I was setting up the printer on the slicer I noticed there's not a longer profile on the uh, on the Cura settings but I found and found out that longer LK4 Pro is the clone of the Alpha Wise U30 Pro. So I used that profile and it worked perfectly from the first print. Now let's put this baby to the print and see how it performs. I 
I was curious to see what was on the SD and I started printing out uh, some of the models that the, were already there. And the first one I printed was this Foxy. Kind of cute. With an infill around 60%. I don't know why they use so much infill when they pre-slice uh, models and they send you a printer. But it really looks nice. And I mean, it's a first print. No particular settings, just straight G-code out of the SD. And the result was pretty okay. Then I printed out this, uh, I don't know what they call it, this Shaolin Monk. Doesn't look bad. I started noticing already on this printer some um, cooling issue. And I'll tell you in a minute what I've done to fix this issue. You can see this cooling problem on the first benchy here. Right here, you can see that it wasn't cooling fast enough, even though the fan was set at 100. What I did was I print this fan duct in PETG, which has a direct uh, blowing right on the nozzle and avoiding the original gap that was here in the middle so that the air is all sent to the nozzle straight away without any loss on the sides and that worked really really good as you can see this is the benchy i printed out after that and there is no temperature issue anymore on the sd there was also this file that i've printed i haven't mounted this on it but the one I've printed was a little bit smaller and it gave more direction on the nozzle. I preferred the one I printed. I put this printer to the test and decided to print a very cheap knockoff PTG and see how that performed. And I printed out this door stopper and it didn't print bad. It's, it's, it's kind of okay. It actually looks good. I started to realize that this printer was good enough to give me some satisfactions and I tested it with a very complicated model that took over 18 hours and this is a vampire castle. As you can see I woke up in the morning and I found a pleasant surprise. This model printed out amazingly. Really, really good. Details are all there. This printer handled this print as a pro and I love this. I decided then to go to vase mode and see how that performed and I printed out this simple, easy, low poly vase and this turned out really, really good. As usual, I print in vase mode with 0.8 width extrusion. I put it slower. This was printed at 30 millimeters per second and it's nice, hard, and it came out great. I found this model on Thingiverse, which is, uh, I don't know, a container for lollies for Halloween, which I liked a lot. And I printed it out and it came out really, really good. I forgot to take the top layer off, so it printed out a top layer. That's my mistake. So I had to cut it off. That's why you see it rough over here. Then of course, I printed out a couple of these. Pen holder for my kids. Turned out great. This is in vase mode as well. The last two prints I've done were really complicated also for the printer that I currently use. And uh, I tried one of the two prints already once and it failed. 
and I said, okay, this printer is reliable. Let's give it some, uh, some hard uh, tests to print. Let's give it something that it will struggle to do. I wanted to push this printer to the limits and see how it performed. And this is a Mandalorian no support model. I mean, no supports at all. No stringing. This is a beautiful olive silk filament I had left. And guys, the model is simply amazing. I was sure that I would have woken up in the morning after 19 hours of print and find spaghetti, but I did not find spaghetti. I found this beautiful model, like so many details. And this was printed in standard quality, not even 0.1. I think it was printed in 0.15. And I mean, you don't expect results like that from a 200 years printer. I mean, I wasn't expecting for a result like this from a 3D printer that's not even 230 euros. I mean, I'm impressed, seriously impressed. Last thing I printed was this uh, container for stuff for the desk. It's part of the Printception uh, um, models. I found this on uh, my mini factory, I think. I had printed this nozzle a few weeks ago for a review on this filament. And now I printed out the rest of the, of the box with this printer. And the result, as you can see, is really really good also the overhang here i mean i must say the truth here i printed in draft 0.3 very fast with a 0 0.8 uh, layer uh, width so even though it came out great and i love this box and blue and gold together look amazing this will stand on my desk and i love it a lot some of you probably may ask, is there anything you don't like of this printer? Yes, there's three main things that I don't like. The first one is the underpowered extruder. I would have preferred a geared extruder, possibly a double gear extruder as uh, many other printers have, because this extruder can have some uh, problem. It can cause some uh, uh, stepping issue. It can cause some uh, you know, layer uh, under extrusion. But so far, I didn't have any issues on the matter. The second main thing that I don't like at all is the fan underneath the printer is extremely loud. It's very hard to shoot a video while this printer is going. It's very loud to study or even work with the printer sitting next to you. And it's a pity because silent step motors of this printer make it i mean they made a lot of effort to make this silent step motors why the hell did you put a fan that makes so much noise so that's the second thing that i don't like the third thing that i don't like is uh, the quality of the wiring system here I mean, you, you gave us a great printer with a strong body, a great glass, uh, 24 volts uh, power uh, supply in it. And then you put this like very cheapy plastic here, around here, that, you know, mm. so that's a no for me. Things that I love, ooh, there's, there's a long list, I wrote them down. It's, uh, it's very easy to put together, to mount, even for a beginner. I love the touchscreen, the touchscreen is great, it's very user-friendly. I love the fact that it does, it's a 24 volt. I love the fact that the body, you can feel quality in it and you can move it from one side to the other, just grabbing it from, from one of the arms. It's compact, it's open source. This printer is open source, so you can you know, program and share firmwares uh, between users, and that's a great thing for 2021. I love that it has the print recovery, not all printers have it. But what I love the most is the price. 
for 230 220 euros you're getting a premium entry level printer i wouldn't even call it entry level because the product that this printer delivers is not an entry level product now as promised at the beginning i would like to drive you through uh let's say one two three four small upgrades i've done to this printer first upgrade is the fan duct as you saw before the second upgrade is this you know this hook here to hold in place the Bowden tube and uh, the wires. This prevents all the cables here from wobbling. The third upgrade I printed is this filament uh, guide here that prevented to, the filament to bend and eventually break. And the last one is here in the back, is same like filament uh, drive through to prevent the filament from breaking and easing the past like the movement of the filament to get in the boat and extruder so this 3d printer has more pros than cons and basically the cons can be fixed with very very small uh, effort actually i saw a model today on thingiverse that promises that it will silent the fan i'm gonna print that tonight and probably i will do an update of this video and tell you if it worked or not many of my viewers ask me what's the best 3d printer what's the best cheap 3d printer for a beginner and uh, i must say it's a longer lk4 pro i wasn't expecting for this level of quality when they sent me this printer i saw the price i saw the specs and i said okay it's gonna be the like the 200 euros printer like standard 200 US printer I've tested many but I was impressed on the quality on the ease to put together and I thought to myself what if it was me for the first time putting this printer together would I have any problems or any issues and the answer is no I would definitely suggest this printer for a beginner I would definitely suggest it because it's a cheap uh, printer but it's not a cheap quality printer it delivers great quality and with small adjustment you can even make it prettier and make it work better i really hope you enjoyed this uh, review guys smash the like buttons if you did like buttons it's only one subscribe if you're not yet subscribed and i'll see you guys on the next video